and this is Melissa from Indo Empowered and I'm very excited to be interviewing Jane Bennett today. Welcome Jane. Oh thank you Melissa, great to be here with you. Yeah fantastic. So you've written an amazing book, The Pill. Uh, are you sure it's for you? And you wrote that together with Alexandra Pope and it hugely opened my eyes to the potential dangers of the contraceptive pill. Uh, I know for myself I was on it for seven years and uh, you know, I was just told, oh, well, it's just the pill. It's just a mini pill. It's no big deal. Um, all women are on it. And, you know, it's it's just normal to have side effects. So I was very intrigued to read about, you know, how these side effects affect women and, you know, how the pill is actually harmful for the body. So, yeah, great to, to have you on board. And um, I'm hoping you can give us some of the insights on that. So can you tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, well, Alexandra and I, you know, obviously were very passionate about uh, this lack of information that women were getting about the pill, uh, what I like to call uh, funded misinformation uh, that's rife uh, around these particular drugs. And often they're talked about as being, oh, well, it's the mini pill or it's low dose or it's just hormones and we have hormones anyway. Um, and yet actually these are really full-on drugs that, that aim to switch off a very natural function in our body and need to be quite strong to do so. Uh, so they, they do have a lot of effects on us beyond our reproductive system. Because mm, mm. they're essentially synthetic. I mean, this is not a, a natural thing that you're putting into your body. So, you know, I think of it as like, you know, any kind of synthetic thing that you're putting into your body and that's going to ultimately land up being more work for the liver to detoxify, you know, more imbalances within the body. So, you know, I never thought of it like that before, but it's only, you know, sort of over the, the years that I've realized that essentially, you know, it's, it's like I'm constantly cleansing the liver to try and flush these things out. So, yeah, but so your book dives into some of the, um, I guess, reasons why we should reconsider the pill. Could you give us maybe five little hints of, of what those could be? Sure. And uh, and really, before I give you the five, you know, there really is a very long list of side effects that, that different women will experience with the pill because uh, these hormones, these synthetic hormones, uh, do have a very profound effect on all aspects of our body. But some of the, the key things for women to watch out for is that the pill can have a really a uh, strong effect on mood. So a lot of women will experience mood disorders, depression, even even to the point of a suicidal depression. Um, it's actually not that uncommon yeah, for women yeah. going on the pill. Um, uh, a lot of women experience also, you know, changes in uh, changes in appetite, changes in libido, uh, changes in skin, changes in their um, all sorts of little aspects of their of their daily life. And weight changes as well, and nausea uh, mm. too. Uh, but they're just sort of a whole little grab bag uh, of, of several things. Some of the other side effects that women won't necessarily uh, physically notice themselves but are really important to know about is the pill increases the risk of all cancers except ovarian cancer. Uh, and this may, this may be a, uh, we may become part of that statistic you know, n numerous years down the track, so we wouldn't know. But the pill is a bit like fertilizer to weeds <laughs> in that sense. It doesn't cause the cancer, but it will increase the likelihood. Um, another another very common one is uh, thrombosis. Um, it may not be, actually, it's not as common as mood, but it's, uh, it's a problem that we need to watch out for. And if any women who are on the pill suddenly start to experience breathlessness or any um, strong leg pain, uh, they really need to get medical help very quickly. Could you explain what thrombosis is? Thrombosis, yeah. Sorry. Thrombosis uh, is blood clots mm -hmm. and uh, the, the pill, any, any formulation of the pill or any formulation of hormonal contraception uh, increases our uh, likelihood of risk of getting thrombosis. If we have a, a family history or a personal history of thrombosis, it increases it even more. And if we are uh, doing a sort of a long haul flight 
uh, and we're on the pill, it means we're we're upping our risk mm, altogether. Mm. So, so I these would... could lead to things like strokes, um, yes. you know, those kinds of things. And in your book, you've actually had a case of a woman who who developed a stroke because of being on the pill. Um, how old was she? She was only in her um, early 20s when that first happened and, uh, and it wasn't diagnosed properly so she stayed on the pill for quite some time um, and kept having mini strokes which really you know, permanently affected her sight. Mm, mm, quite, quite frightening. Um, mm. and I know we sort of dismiss it, you know, we just say, oh, well, it's a list of side effects and we'll just deal with it. I know for me I felt like I wasn't actually myself, like my my personality it was lost in that pill you know I didn't know who I was and the depression and the weight gain all of those things actually change your whole outlook on life and and how you go through life um, so I think that women underestimate how it actually impacts every aspect of who you are uh, so I've, I noticed a huge difference when I came off it it was sort of wow I'm me again <laughs> you know so yeah and amongst women I speak to about it, you know, what you've just said is incredibly common. Um, and women may get sort of a variety of uh, physical responses, but very commonly would say something like, I don't feel myself, you know, I, I don't know where my centre is anymore, I don't know who I am. Um, I, I had a woman once who had been on the pill for 20 years and after hearing uh, about the many side effects which she was experiencing in a talk that I gave, decided to go off it. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't even needing contraception at that time. It was just something that she habitually was taking. Uh, and I saw her six months later and she said that, you know, she woke up one morning and thought, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling so different? And she realized after a few minutes just feeling into it that actually she was feeling happy mm -hmm. for the first time in a long time. She'd become so used to this low-level depression and she just thought it was her. And she had started taking the pill before she was even an adult. Mm -hmm. So she didn't get to know herself uh, without the pill. Mm. She had no way of, you know, knowing who she was without it. Mm. So we, re it's really hard to kind of even pinpoint where the influence of the pill begins and ends. Yeah, it's a very yeah. Yeah. pervasive yeah. drug. So, what are your thoughts on? I mean, a lot of women go on the pill for different reasons. Obviously, contraception is usually the first reason. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you're taking a woman usually in her teens, she's right in the middle of puberty, the development of hormones is all happening then and, you know, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, it's a, it's a really tricky, tricky uh, question, Melissa, because, uh, of course, you know, contraception is incredibly important and it's very important for, for everyone who needs it and may, perhaps especially for teenagers uh, to, really be, to really be protecting themselves from uh, unplanned pregnancy as best they can. Uh, at the same time, what I, what I fear isn't happening is that uh, girls and uh, perhaps their families, if they're involved and, they're, and their partners too, are not getting the information they need to actually make a truly informed choice. And uh, so instead of them having that information to really weigh up these issues or even to start taking the pill but have a full understanding of what, what to look out for in side effects, um, then then they can continue to make an informed choice. So if after some time they've experienced some side effects and are able to say, yes, this is, the, this is very likely to be because of the pill, that they can then make some other choices. Exactly, uh, yeah. Because uh, there from, are natural contraceptive methods out there and they're actually far better for you because you become much more in tune with your body in terms of what's going on and if there are any imbalances within the body then you're able to recognize those much quicker than if you go on the pill I mean for me I feel like the, the pill is almost like a band-aid you know it just sort of covers everything up but it doesn't actually ever resolve anything um, a lot of women also go on the pill because they might have irregular periods or uh, you know, inconsistencies within their period. Endometriosis is very common that women get told, oh, well, we'll just put you on the pill because we can somehow then regulate the estrogen dominance or imbalances that are going on. What are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I, I, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky area because for some women, not all women, but for some women who are experiencing uh, difficult periods or endometriosis, painful periods, you know, or, or a whole gamut of, uh, uh, of difficulties, including irregular cycles, mm-hmm. um, that the pill, at least superficially and at least initially, can be seen to help, may may reduce symptoms, certainly not always, but may do that. Uh, so this is what makes it, uh, for, for many medical practitioners, perhaps the first go-to. It's easy for them. Um, but it's it's a bit like knocking out the warning light. Is uh, It can seem, okay, everything's fine now, the warning light isn't flashing. But, of course, the, the deeper problem is still there. And over time... The, uh, the synthetic hormones of the pill will actually exacerbate the deeper problem and, and more problems will start to arise for that woman. Uh, whereas there are, there are really uh, many and really not difficult ways to, for women to approach endometriosis, approach difficult uh, periods, being too heavy, uh, too painful, too irregular, whatever, um, to, to really start to, within their own um, diet, lifestyle, environmental factors, stress, all of these, by, by starting to, to attend to these, we can really make a, a huge difference to those problems, um, the, the underlying aspect of those problems mm-hmm. and really have a deep healing. Mm-hmm. So I would always encourage that, even though I have great sympathy for women needing to have relief from symptoms. And if a woman needs to start using hormonal contraception to get that relief, and if it gives her that relief, well, that's great. However, I would re- highly recommend that she then starts to look um, as soon as possible at other ways that she can create a deeper and more lasting change for herself. Fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Um, really, the, the, as we keep con- taking the pill, we're really just undermining our health more and more. Uh, there's, there's two main pathways that the pill uh, can affect us. One is through just purely through the synthetic hormones and the direct effect that they have on our whole body system. Uh, and the other is through one of those effects, which is that it, the pill changes the pH in our gut uh, and then that changes our capacity to absorb nutrients. So over time, our, our nutrient status changes and becomes more and more out of whack. Okay. Uh, so the longer a woman is on the pill, the longer this will happen. Even if she's eating a good diet, even if she's taking supplements, uh, this it really can't mitigate completely this effect. Uh, so real, in, in one sense, the sooner she gets off it, the better. So that would be any kind of vitamins or minerals? I mean, I've, I've sort of always understood that folic acid and the B group are particularly prone to being deficient with being on the pill. But So you're saying that just any, any kind of mineral or nutrient absorption is going to struggle because of that change in pH? The, it seems to be, and that's the information I have uh, from from reading and also from observing clinical uh, clinical information. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it does seem zinc is particularly prone. Uh, the zinc copper balance, which is really critical to uh, a lot of functions, uh, seems to get out of whack considerably. Um, so, you know. Uh, as far as I can see, I think it affects the whole absorption and the whole balance. And of course, once something essential and major is out of balance, it, it, it really affects the whole spectrum. Mm, you've got a cascade uh, effect because, yeah. you know, it doesn't just affect the ovaries, it affects the whole body. Uh, you know, everything we eat affects everything within the whole mechanics of the body. So, yeah. Okay. So, for, so from that perspective, uh, when, once a woman does give up uh, the pill, stops taking it, um, it would be great to really spend some time uh, making sure that her diet is really top-notch, really good, fresh foods, just minimizing the refined, um, the bad fats, the, the whole deal, and uh, and really just re-looking at uh, her stress, her environment, environmental toxins, to the extent that she is able to, uh, that can really make a difference. If she's experiencing uh, considerable side effects, and this can be, um, the, the, the liver can really be play up at this time when, when it's really trying to release those, uh, uh, those toxins and um, work to get itself back into good good form. And 
you know, I, I do, I really hear from so many women that there is so much fear around fertility. Um, and I understand this. It's, it's, you know, when we don't want to get pregnant, we don't want to have to worry about an unplanned pregnancy. Uh, this is a really big factor. And so many women stay on the pill or other forms of hormonal contraception despite, you know, quite serious side effects because they don't feel like they've got a choice. Yeah. And um, the, the, there's, there's a lot of myths around this. Actually, the, the pregnancy rate on the pill is quite high, uh, it's around 8% per year. So um, that's sort of on the ground. I mean, we have, a, we have a, an idea that it's 99% plus effective, but that's if we're all living in laboratories, which we don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I like to say to people, you know, if you do, do your research, you know, you're going to be fertile for decades of your life. You know, become an expert in contraception. Really look into the barrier methods. Really look into good modern uh, fertility awareness methods, and and learn learn about them all. Have a toolbox because different things will work for you best at different times. And if if all women had a, um, either a really good or even a rudimentary uh, practice of fertility awareness and had a good idea about her cycles, then then we have a lot more uh, choices that we can that we can make. So I think these tips actually help us uh, to have the the most effective uh, contraception, where we're really our own intention and our own um, our own best practice, our own awareness is involved, mm -hmm. rather than just some unconscious. Uh, don't don't really be involved kind of form of contraception. Yeah, and I think that whole idea of, of being in tune with yourself and, and where you are and, and I think that's why I really like the, you know, sort of awareness methods because it's you have to know what's going on. You have to, you know, measure your own temperature. You have to see what the mucus is doing. So you know what your body is doing and you know, I get very annoyed when women describe these things as disgusting or gross or, you know, why would you want to look at your menstrual cycle and what's coming out? And it's like, well, if you don't, you actually have no concept of what your body's doing and if there is a problem, you know. So I really encourage women to really, you know, this is normal. This is natural. This is we're women. This is what happens every month. And, you know, not to feel that this is something you need to shy away from or be embarrassed about because that's how, you know, these conditions like endometriosis get undiagnosed for so long because we are not in tune with our bodies. We take a, a pill, we slap something over the top and, and we don't deal with it. And then we get to, you know, our mid thirties and say, oh, I want to get pregnant now. Why is nothing working? You know, just turn it on and off like, <laughs> you know, it's a magic bullet. It's, it's you know, it doesn't work that way. So, yeah, it's, uh, I feel it's really important that women get back in tune with their bodies and, and admire the, the amazing capabilities of that process of, of every single month of those changes, changes naturally occurring. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I found for myself, and I'm hearing from you too, and, and so many women that I speak to, when they actually start to learn fertility awareness methods, how profoundly satisfying and, and fascinating that is, above and beyond its usefulness for contraception. Uh, it almost becomes a side benefit <laughs> to, yeah. to the self-awareness that it can give us. Definitely. Mm. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights on the contraceptive pill. And, you know, I hope this gives women a bigger understanding that they need to go out, they need to research, they need to actually acknowledge what they're putting into their bodies and, and being aware of those side effects and how they're actually hampering their health. So we're going to post a lot more information underneath this video. But, uh, Thank you so much for your time and, and for sharing. It um, needs to get out there. This information needs to be told to a lot more women. Mm. Thanks, Melissa. Great to speak.